All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about my survival knives that I have left. Now, if you've been around the channel at least since this summer, you'll probably know that I sold off a bulk of my survival knives to help push the uh, my channel into a more EDC knife driven and focused channel and content as a whole. Now, I know you guys really do want to see more survival content, so that is why I am actually changing gears and going back into survival knives and such. And ultimately, we're going to be hopefully bringing some pretty cool survival knives that you haven't seen and I haven't had on the channel so far. And overall, I was feeling a little bit burnt out on the whole survival knife thing and just survival outdoor content in general. So hopefully, you guys will enjoy some of the new content and hopefully it will be fun. So anyways, before we start showing and showcasing more survival knives and outdoor gear on the channel as a whole, I thought it would be fun to show you guys the three survival knives that I have left. And that is right, I sold off, like I said, pretty much the entire collection of survival knives and that was that. So. Let's talk about these three blades. So we're gonna go from smallest to largest and starting with the Half Face Blades Disaster Junior. Now, like I said, this is the Half Face Blades Disaster Junior and this one's in CPM 3V. Overall, this guy is probably one of my favorite survival knives, especially for being smaller. Unfortunately, the one thing I dislike about it is it's you know kind of handle or finger grooves for the handle, but outside of that, it has a really great robust tip made out of CPM 3V. 3V, so you can really put this thing or run this thing through the ringer. And it should still work just fine. So overall, this is a pretty awesome knife. I really do enjoy it. I like it. I think it's overall a pretty darn good <clears throat> survival blade for what it is, a smaller survival knife. So that is the Half Face Blades Disaster Junior. <clears throat> Next to that one is one that I can't get rid of because it is one of my favorites, and that is the Bark River Knives uh, Bravo One. Now this is one knife that I was really never expecting to love that much because I'd handled Bravo Ones before, but I really did want to actually get one, play around with it, and while I do think a Bravo 1.5 would be better than a Bravo One, I think for a reasonably compact survival knife, this thing is pretty darn fire. And I really do like the fact that mine in particular does not have the polished micarta handles, so they're a little bit more raw, they're definitely a lot more grippy, but overall this knife is fantastic. It has a very high convex grind to it, and so you have a quarter inch thick piece of A2 tool steel, but it's blended with the fact that it has this nice long sweeping um, convex grind that gives it a lot of slicing characteristics. So overall a really great knife and moreover too, the Bravo one has a fantastic history um, of how it was developed, how it came to be, and I think that makes it a really awesome knife overall. So lastly, and the kind of just end of the survival knives is my truck survival knife, my go-to survival knife, and that is the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. This thing is often touted as unobtainium, and it is not a very easy knife to get for those wanting one. Um, they are not typically cheap either, but this is probably one of the best survival knives, at least in my opinion. And I think that's you know something that I get a lot of comments about, especially with the Pacific, is people always wondering, you know, why. Why do you settle with a Pacific? Why don't you have something, you know, more typical? Why don't you have the TRC Apocalypse, you know, stuff like that. And for me, I think a lot of it, it comes back down to like with bushcrafting knives, survival knives, and other, you know, categories as a whole, firearms and stuff. It really goes back to not so much the brand, not so much the, you know, particular um, knife itself, but how much are you practicing with it? And so for me, the Pacific just became that knife that I dumped a lot of hours into practice practice in wilderness survival, so I feel very comfortable doing a wide variety of tasks with it. And as you guys can see, this thing definitely has been put through the ringer. I think it still looks pretty good for the amount of use and abuse it's seen, but overall for me, you know, I can only speak to my personal experience. It hasn't failed on me, and it is overall a pretty darn good knife. Not to mention, too, it is totally worth noting that, um, once again, not easy to get and still very expensive, but they are making these um, 
Pacifics in Magna Cut, or I should say they, Chris Reeve Knives is making Pacifics in Magna Cut, and I think that that is probably one of the coolest things out there, because this is a go-to, dedicated, like, I know this is a good survival knife kind of deal that is now in Magna Cut. And so I'm not going to say that they're the first fixed blade to come out in Magna Cut, because that's not true. Um, if nothing else, you know, um, Spyderco has released, you know, their um, meal team in a Magna Cut variant or flavor, and there's been several other, you know, fixed blades out there in Magna Cut with good heat treats. However, I think that the Pacific is very unique in the fact that it is one of the few, you know, really, you know, proven survival knives. Like the Mule Team is a, uh, you know, just a general test bed fixed blade, and it's not, necess not necessarily a bad knife, but it's not a type of knife that I would legitimately take into a survival situation. So something like a Pacific and Magna Cut is probably like the cream of the crop for survival knives in this age if you are willing to foot the bill. Once again, it is not a cheap knife. Um, if you manage to get one, luckily, like you can get them like retail for them is about $400. But trying to get one on secondary like eBay, you're gonna be looking at about 750. So, you know, if you really want it, it's out there, it exists, but it is not cheap in the slightest. However, I will say this is my Pacific and CPM S35VN and I will say it's a great knife. Like it, if you got one, in Magna Cut, it would only be even better. So anyways, that is a look at my three survival knives, the Pacific, the Bark River Knives Bravo 1, and the Half Face Blades Disaster Junior. It's really pared down to these three blades, and overall, I will say, I think I'm going to grow this list and have some more survival knives to bring to bear. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.